All right, it is time for the John Riggins Show, Friday, March 11th edition. Beware the Ides of March. I'm not sure if we're there yet, but we are beware of high ga- gas prices. It's supposed to snow here in D.C. tomorrow. We got a new quarterback. We don't know what the hell's going on. So let's get into it all with here's Rigo. All right, Toddy. Uh, man, I do not know where to begin because we had technical difficulties yesterday that preempted our getting Okay, but on. you're the only one that knew that. So, huh? but, but go ahead. But, but that's good. That's fine. It's fine. We had technical difficulties. I take the heat for this. No, but it wasn't your fault. It was. The point was, though, that you turned into MacGyver <laughs> later yesterday <laughs> afternoon. I got to give you a golf clap well, on yeah. that because we've, we've, also, we've got a technician here that's pretty good. Actually, he's from the University of Kansas. We don't, I won't mention any names. And we were trying to rely on him, but he was producing a basketball game yesterday. He's a stud, and, a genius. Exactly, exactly. He knows his stuff, right? He knows oh, his he's shit. He's the guru. But... Because he was busy, Todd just wouldn't let it go. As you're a little bit like me, that stuff starts to eat away at you, and then you keep working on it, and all of a sudden, voila, you fix the problem I right? went, all by yourself. I went back to my office, and it was bugging me. And I stayed exactly. back in my office for like 90 the minutes. Feeling. And then you were at Costco, mm-hmm. I believe, and I said, I cannot believe what these hands have done. You're like Grease Man, touched by God. <laughs> these hands have been touched by God. Grease Manelli. Yeah, that's him. But uh, there's not a better feeling, is there, when you pull something like that? I mean, it happens very... i got to tell you, you're not going to get a feeling like that probably for another couple of years. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy it. But although, we should go get drunk as soon as we're done with the show. I'm today. down with that. And since we you dressed, might have did it last night. And, I well, don't know. a little bit. Got a little, got it. Well, that's you know, good. Got it. And, and since, thank you for telling me we let's both wear black today and uh, look like we're in a. Uh, yeah, dance right now. We look like those Russian <laughs> dancers, although that might be a bad word. Pejorative now. Yeah. Did, you, did you remember Ed Sullivan show? Oh, yeah, big time. Do you remember when you'd bring on the, the Russian dancers? It was. <laughs> yeah, that thing hey, with they'd be the down legs. Squatting, oh, my gosh. And they'd be kicking her legs out. I was thinking about that yesterday. Day I'm going. They're probably the Ukrainian. Hell? I'm trying to think. Ooh, part, half of them were Ukrainian. That's what it's all about. They're trying to get that group back. They're trying to get the band back together. Putin says, ain't putting the band back together. Sure I guess guys. that's what they're doing. Uh, man, I don't know where to start. I know where to start. I made a salad last night, a Caesar salad. It's probably the best Caesar salad. I can't remember the last time I had one as good. And you know what I think the, the secret was? The anchovies. Now, you have to be careful. I got some anchovies. You, you mentioned Costco. I'll go ahead and dump this on them because that's where they came from. And I opened those, that can of, uh, of anchovies, and they were in olive oil, which is most of the places you go around here, y- your anchovies are going to be in olive oil. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm embarrassed to say, because then you'd have to be admit that you got that close, but it, it smelled like ass. <laughs> I'm telling you, Todd. I threw them out. I'm going. Oh, I know anchovies oh, don't no. smell. I mean, some people say anchovies stink, and but I'm going a real a good anchovy. I don't. I like the smell of it. I said this smells like ass. Oh and this is, no! So I tossed them. So then I got and then I got a I got a cookbook at home and uh, it's written by an Italian lady. She's deceased now. I wish I could remember the name her name, but anyway, uh, Marcella, Marcella Hazan. That's who it is. And Marcella always said you've got to get salt packed anchovies packed in salt so i went on i've been looking for them for quite a while and i went online there's an italian store here over in fairfax over merrifield over in that area Uh uh-huh i don't think they carry my look but they didn't have it so i found a store that had them it's a big tin you know about yay big around and uh, it's about that tall and it's got all these anchovies and it's just layered after layer of anchovies with just all the salt packed on top and that's it I think when those anchovies come out of the water, they cut the heads off of them and throw them in the salt, and that's and, and it's like the it's like the is an anchovy a sardine? Or it's is, like a sardine. Okay. It is. But it's not the same thing, but it's in that. I would guess it's in the that same family. family. It's a bait fish, basically. You know, they swim in huge schools and you know all, all kinds of stuff. But it's the pack, not unlike a Virginia ham. You know that that Sam. You know, a Virginia oh. ham was just pure packed in salt. That's all it is. Oh. You got to soak one of those for you, oh. and that's the same thing you got to do with these anchovies. But I think that's where the secret was, is that because the flesh on a, a, a anchovy that's soaked in oil, olive oil, is just mush. It's like 
These actually are, you know, where I had to take a knife and get underneath and pull and debone the damn thing. It was almost like I had to flay a little anchovy about that long. <laughs> I was going to say but, there's not a lot there. No, and it's kind of a pain in the ass, but I got to tell you, the, 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 the results on the end are well worth it. So I felt I, I was really happy about that. And I'll, I'll give everybody a real quick tip here as far as, uh, and I think that it's probably a salad not a lot of people make because they're scared of making the dressing. But I saw, I came across this several years back on the internet about how to make, you know, basically, you know, you use egg yolks to make, to make uh, Caesar salad dressing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you put, and you use a little bit of anchovy in it and so on and so forth. Well, if you use mayonnaise instead of the egg yolks, you're way ahead of the game. And then use a little Dijon mustard, you use a little Worcester sauce, a little lemon and some garlic, and then some mashed up anchovy and the mayonnaise. I'm not going to say, I, I could, you know, give you, but that's basically the ingredients. And I'm going to tell you something. It, you make it in no time at all. It's a great salad dressing, and, and you whip it up really quick. You made it. Yeah. I had it over at your house yeah. a week that's ago, right. two that's weeks right. ago, something like that. And it was, but you didn't have anchovies in it, did you? Not then, no. Thank God, because I in don't fact, like I don't anchovies. Think I, no, I don't think I made that. I don't think, what's that? Yeah, you made a Caesar salad, and it was sure amazing. Was yes, because you said you probably don't eat this. You know my ridiculously finicky habits but caesar salad is the one thing i like but no oh, anchovies that's right because right. you made the crab cakes yeah you which know which was I truly might have, amazing but i didn't put anchovies in it i know thank I had, god but i had anchovies <laughs> in the dressing though. okay i know well, well, but see that's the whole deal my girls are like this they'll eat that up all day long as soon as you tell them what's in it they can't eat it same way with you. uncle t's the same way if i yeah. know what's in it I don't like the way something's spelled. I won't eat it. Uh, well, anyway, up. back to, you know, yesterday I'm on my way over here, mm. and uh, we've got a road where it's very narrow to get out. And I turned into Jimmy the Squealer. We had a, uh, there was a car park. They were doing some yard work, and they got and another car. You couldn't have got a fire truck through there. So, you know, you got that guilt where you roll over on somebody, <laughs> and, you, you know, you're feeling like, I'm you dropped a, a dime? Yeah, I'm a fink. You dropped a but dime. But I'm thinking, like I told the guy, I, I called the county and I said, look, there's a fire hazard over on 79th Street. And they go, okay, what's the deal? And they give you, you know, they, they, you run through all the things. But, you know, and it kind of it kind of bothered me a little bit. Were you bit. allowed to do it anonymously, sir? We need you. No, I gave my name. <laughs> I did. Don't ring <laughs> Joe Theismann. <laughs> yeah, you know, I thought about giving him an alias. I don't think anybody gives their real name. That was stupid enough I did. <laughs> I don't know. I was in the moment. I'm going, all right, I'm, I'm good for it. I'll stand up to it. But, yeah, you could have never got a fire. I could barely get through with my car. Fire truck would have never got through there. And I'm thinking, you know, you, what if my house caught on fire? Lisa Marie's boss, where she works, his house burned down on New Year's Day or the day after this oh, year. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Cannot and imagine. did you know that uh, former Senator Chuck Robb, his house burnt down? Back around Christmas, I think, over in McLean somewhere. That's just awful. Isn't that horrendous? I mean, it's like you know, see people. Look, you were talking about this. That's what's going on in Russia right now, or I should say, in the Ukraine. Right. It's just so hard to relate to. I don't want to be. I don't want to turn this into a downer. I'll tell you what, though. I did have a. Uh, I had a moment, and I think we've all been there. At least I have a couple times, and it's really an embarrassing moment, but. I was over at, uh, at the parking lot outside the grocery store, and I'd just, I, I just come out. I'm getting ready to leave. Kind of spitting a little bit of rain. So everybody's kind of anxious to get in their car. And, <laughs> and uh, there's this uh, woman, and, the, you know, it's the beep, beep, beep. And her car's locked on honk, right? And it just, you know, the, on the alert or right, safety or right. whatever, panic button or whatever. <clears throat> and she's out there. And that thing just keeps beep, beep. <laughs> and I'm sitting there watching because now people are starting to stop and I'm going, oh man, I've been there. And I'm, you know, it's like, please stop. I swear it's my car. Please stop. <laughs> exactly. Please, please, Lord, make it stop. And uh, finally, some other woman came over and gave her some kind of advice. I'm thinking to myself, I'm going, just get in the car right. and start it. Right. I think that'll It's a reset. Right. It's a reset. Yeah. And she couldn't <laughs> figure that out. But it, it got to be pretty comical. Then, on top of this, now, here's another thing that's probably happened to everybody here, but it's worth noting. Because when I drove into my parking spot, the guy that, was, that I pulled in beside, he drives into his parking spot cockeyed, right? 
So how do you get in? You got to drive in cockeyed, right? And I hate this when I go to a parking lot. This is the grumpy old man segment. <laughs> I hate this when I go to a parking, you know, where I'm in and I see some some ass has got his ass hanging out in the next parking space, right? So you got, it's almost like instead of a parallel park or, you know, where you're parking straight, it's like, you know, instead of true north, you got to park magnetic north. <laughs> and I was like, what the hell is this bullshit? And so I park magnetic north and I come out and all the cars are gone, right? So his he's gone, the car beside me, they're gone. And... I look like you're the, you're the ass. butthead. Yes, I'm going. Everybody's looking at me, going, "What a jack off!" You don't know how to do it. Like there were four other cars. I swear, <laughs> it was not good. Um, have you? You haven't. I, I, I asked you this yesterday. You haven't been watching this show, 1883. Do you know anything about it? I do. That it's supposed to be the prequel to Yellowstone, which. Mm-hmm. I've only gotten through four or five, and I take that back, seven, eight episodes Ooh, of Yellowstone. You know how to waste time, don't you? And because I can't figure it out on Paramount. I kind of have Paramount, I kind of don't, and Which I record. Par- oh, that's what it's shown yeah, on. Yeah, and, and so, but I want to watch that first. And I asked you yesterday, do I need to, do I need to watch all of Yellowstone so to you, appreciate 1883. 1883 as the prequel? And what was my answer? And your answer was, you don't need to watch any of it. <laughs> Stop right now. I mean, unless truly, unless you can look at it through the eye of mystery science theater. Oh, I love that. Yeah. It's, I, think it, I think it's still on, but maybe the reruns. But they did, they, that thing went for about 10, 11 years. But th- this stuff is so hokey. And I know everybody loves Yellowstone. And 1883 is written by the same person, and the same people or a person, I don't know. And there's some more stuff coming out. I don't know if it's related to this. But 1883, I'm telling you, it's, it's turned into, what was it, Succession? Have you seen any of that? I, I, no, I mean, but... It's like Succession. Every character is so unlikable. You just go... <sighs> I, I start, you know, I watched probably the first couple of seasons, and it's you get to the point where you end up loving to hate it. You, you, but you, but you can't, you know, other stuff you like, you binge watch. Oh, you know, I'll just sit there, you know, for a couple of hours and keep watching episode after episode. But stuff that you don't, you know, where you, that you end up having, you love to hate. You have to space that out because you're going, oh, man. And then you go, okay, turn it back on. Sure enough, you get about half. You go, God, there's a reason. Well, when did you watch. check out on Yellowstone? What what was the you moment? Know, what what okay, was the I'll moment take... where you said, okay, it's jumped the shark? Okay, guess it what? Went, you went Arthur Fonzarelli in Hawaii yeah. riding the shark. Yeah, it, it was, uh, I don't know, probably about this. It was season one, probably about the third episode, fourth <laughs> episode. <laughs> that's season one. What? That, that's very early. <laughs> well, listen, it only takes one event, and I I'm like, that's bullshit. I ain't watching that no more. I'll tell you what it was. She's driving down the, the road, the, the gal that plays the daughter, I guess, uh, and, and I guess she's the sister to, what's her name, Kevin Costner? Isn't it? Yes. Oh, uh, well, no, it's his daughter. Isn't it his the, daughter? The lawyer? That's his daughter? It'd be kind of, he'd been like 12 years well, old. Well, it depends which one. There's the older one, there's the younger one. The older, the older gal. Okay. That you know that that's kind of a you know she's you know she's a little bit of a trawler and you know just kind of has her way and does whatever she wants because it's like she's like part of the owner of the ranch I think or thought I think she's part of the family right if we're talking about the same gal and we <laughs> but go ahead that's the daughter that's the, the one who's like the little man, manipulator and a kind of, that's yeah. the, that's the daughter of Kevin Cosner yeah. And 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 the brothers. Okay, that's possible. And, and and it's like she, yeah, she, and she's the one that like came back from the big city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's her. Okay, yeah. daughter. I thought yeah. it was sister. I can't tell. Uh, wouldn't make any difference. It's been so long. It's been a couple of years since I, you know, we turned it on. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. They're driving down a road, and I think she was with her dad. I think it was Kevin Costner, and she pulls out a gun. Right. I mean, it, and it's not, you know, it's not a, a, a 380 or you know what I'm talking about. It's not a 22. It's it's like a 44 or a 45. I I mean, this is a big pistol, 357 minimum, but probably a bigger, you know, like 41 Magnum, 44, but whatever. She pulls out on Pops? She did something. Like, she was going to kill herself, I think. I forget. Oh, somebody. yeah, yeah. She, she, she's you remember a hot that mess. Scene? She's a hot mess. You remember that scene? Yeah. And instead, you know, she, does she shoot the gun on the floor? But listen, <laughs> honest to God, those people are deaf right now. You're done. They just drive on down the road like shit. Do this every day. Yeah. 
<laughs> Shoot another one off in here, honey. I'll just... My ears down. I what? Need one, I need one more to clear that left <laughs> Maybe ear. Maybe I only white shot because she couldn't hear the second one. Hey, rip off another round. <laughs> Damn. I saw that and I went, this is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. So now that bleeds us into 1883. Now, there's a, there's, a, there's a young girl, young woman, young girl. I don't know how old she is. Maybe she's 20, 22. But she's like the protagonist that is the narrator of the story. Uh, you know, she's the hot babe. But she's only in the story. She's probably what she's supposed to be, maybe 16, 18. I don't know how old she's supposed to be. And there's two country western singers that are, that are that, you know, a couple of the stars in the Faith show. Faith Hill and Tim McGraw? Yeah, exactly. And then and then Sam Elliott is, you know, and then there's, there's some other guy. There's a couple other people in there. And they're taking a wagon train, you know, to Montana, obviously. So they're literally pioneers going out looking for exactly. a better way. And, you know, and it's all about, you know, the, the difficulties they face and stuff like that. And so there's one episode where, you know, she's, she's this young maiden and she falls in love with a cowboy and of course you know they have their little rendezvous and then they have then they're attacked by what were they there was somebody anyway he gets killed and if i'm if i'm think if i'm remembering this correctly he gets killed and she's all up forlorn well before they had to cross this river they made all they made a lot of these immigrants that they're that they're helping get to where they want to go they had to throw stuff out of their wagons because it just wasn't going to work. You got too much shit. You brought too much shit, like everybody does. Still happens overpacked. today. You overpacked. Yeah, it's same. You thing. all can't you know, fit it in. I got to just jump in the car with Lisa Marie and look in the back. Go, okay, <laughs> you got plenty of shit back there. Uh, so anyway, there's this piano. They they brought a piano with them. These people. They got to bring a piano with them. Well, I hope that was. You good. need a piano when you cross well, the prairie. Could be in firewood. A could wagon. end up firewood. Firewood would be the only possibility, <laughs> but usually you can find that laying around. Well, somewhere. that's true. They had a lot of trees back there. I don't know. Maybe the piano strings. If you want to kill somebody, <laughs> I got no idea. But they're out there, and so this piano sitting there, and and she's like all mopey. And as soon as I saw the chair. In front of the piano, I went, oh, no, it's going to happen. I told Lee, she's going she's gonna to sit down and start playing the piano. And <laughs> on cue, this dirge, she starts playing this dirge. And I'm like, this is bullshit. <laughs> I mean, what's the, uh, they dump the piano, he gets killed, she's here. Then the chair just happens to be, she could have played it standing up. I mean, come on. You know, but she plays it sitting down. She like you know, it could spin around like a bar stool, and she start throwing it down after the dirge. Well, <laughs> camp down, lady. Well, <laughs> do Now that might have been all right, <laughs> kind of like the shooting a Dan, dirty Dan McGrew. Uh, and, and so then it gets better from this. We watched it the other night, and so she start that starts off, and she like I said, she's the narrator, and the acting is fine. I mean, it's it is what it is. Uh, I like Sam Elliott. I think he's a good actor. And, who wouldn't kill to have Sam Elliott's voice, right? I mean, he's what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it don't get much gravelier <laughs> than that. He probably doesn't smoke either. <laughs> it's, he's a natural. Like tea. He's a natural. But she starts off with man's dirty hands, and you know, in other words, it's like. And I'm thinking to myself, I said, boy, that writer really thought he was nailing it when he came up with that bullshit. You know how? I guess everything basically she's trying to say. I can't remember it all because I'm. I start tuning it out immediately, and so. You get part of the way through it, and all of a sudden there's this really, really strikingly. In fact, I think it's the same guy that that's blown up and, and turned into a big star. That was in that that uh, that log. Remember when they, the loggers with the drugs and the guy with the bear trap on his foot and goes. Jason Momoa. I and think that, that might that, be who it is. That Netflix cliffhanger, <laughs> literally cliffhanger. <laughs> literally cliffhanger. <laughs> That's exactly where they get where it came from. I think it might be him because this this Indian, I mean, is like a stud, and you know, he's he's a Comanche. I mean, Native American. He's a Comanche. I'm guessing he's a Comanche because I think they're still in Texas or Oklahoma. Comanches were badasses, and I'm guessing that that's who they who he'd had to be. But he's a nice Comanche. He speaks the King English, by the way. <laughs> I mean, it might have been. Uh, I don't think it was Peter Nunca or what Peta Nunca, Nakona. That was his name. And his son was was uh, Quanah Parker, who was the last chief of the Comanches. I don't think it was him, but he was a good-looking guy. There's a book about him. Anyway, th they meet up, and, of course, she now she's lost her cowboy boyfriend, so she's looking. 
And you can see right away. Yep, she's gonna go for the, the love command. connection. Oh yes, <laughs> and there, she's like, you know, and there's all this stuff, and somehow he says, well, what? It's something about her horse, and, and what do you think her horse's name is? It's Lightning. <laughs> Lightning. Why is his name Lightning? <laughs> now, if you if you're into this, I apologize. It's just my take. Did on she it. ask about his horse? Well, no, it didn't. It didn't. It didn't <laughs> But it was eventually, I'm sure she's going to see his horse. He's going to ride his horse. Yeah, exactly. There's going to be some riding getting done. I would not be surprised. But anyway, some more than other than what you saw. So basically, they challenge, she, they end up racing their horses. Oh. She's Comanche against lightning her. Yeah. You and say, guess what? Little white girl, little, little white girl making her way west. It's like the white girl by a neck. The white girl by a neck. One by a neck. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, that's cool. <laughs> right Sorry on time. That. Here comes the train. <laughs> Here comes the train. <laughs> there wasn't any trains out here. The trains maybe there was. In. It was. Yeah. Don't you they like keep that? Keep it rolling. I, like right that. on time. And, and yeah. then the train came and lightning jumped in the train. Oil Can <laughs> Harry is right there. So on, so what's her name in half? Right by the railroad track. <laughs> anyway, she, you know, she wins this race. And I'm thinking to myself right away. Now, there's a book, what's it called? Something of the People, Something of the Summer Moon. And that's where it talks about the Comanches and what a fierce band of warriors they really were. In fact, in this book, it's, it, the book says, I don't know. I mean, you have to go into history and you're dealing with Cossacks and all kinds of light cavalries. But they said, that when you look at a light cavalry, that the Comanches were probably amongst the best in the world right. of all time. You're going to tell me that the white girl on that, on, that, on lightning. She was one tenth Comanche, okay? One. <laughs> lightning. Maybe lightning was, was, was the real deal. And <laughs> I don't know, Todd. That's it. I just, you know what? Well, once new again, segment. the piano. There's then I a, see this. I mean, she's doing, she's, she's doing all this kind of stuff. And now, I ain't done yet now with the funky <laughs> white girl. But so I'm thinking to myself, do you realize the Comanches, they say, that I don't know how many arrows they could get off. It, it's you can't you can't believe what they're capable of. I mean, it's in print when they would when they would have somebody pinned down riding a horse, and I think they lay, went off to the side of the horse and must have shot underneath the horse's neck. You'd if, get a Comanche, you had to kill his horse. You weren't going to shoot him. I'm guessing now. I don't know, but my point is. This guy was probably that good of a horseman, and he can't. Yeah, okay, whatever you say. Yeah, I think then maybe. the other possibility is the Comanche let her win. Yeah. He's like, oh, gosh. I don't okay. know, though. Come Comanches over. are pretty competitive. <laughs> Rachel, I don't know. They're good segment. community guys. Just good community guys. <laughs> yeah. Super smart. Tough suckers. We got a, a new segment, and it's called... This passes Rago's bullshit test. <laughs> and I like that. That's, and that is, that's that is officially bullshit. bullshit. <laughs> that's the way you say it, too. <laughs> so, okay, now we ain't done yet. I'm going to finish it up real quick on this, and then we'll get into, hopefully, something less important. <laughs> uh, later in the show, they, they get hit by a tornado. Tornado now. And you see it coming, and there was they. There's all this stuff and everybody, you know, the only thing I, I grew up with the tornadoes. I'm in Tornado Alley, Centralia, Kansas, although they never did see one there. I never, I've seen what they've done. And then, of course, you see it on the news. But I literally was there when it went through. It would have been 1960, 1966, the spring of 66. It cut a swath through Topeka. And I mean literally cut a swath. It's an amazing thing about a tornado. It's like the, the, the world's biggest uh, bush hog. Cuts literally houses in half. The house is off just a little bit. Compl remains standing. Nothing wrong with it. It literally, if you got, you can see it's a straight line when that thing goes. There. It's like a saw blade, basically. It, it's stunning what they're capable of doing. So anyway, they get hit with this tornado, and you see these wagons just, you know, and and which would be true. And I'm thinking, well. And I think that this is the point they get to. But then they, but then the cattle and everything, they cut their horses loose. And, you know, the thing, the one thing, you want to find a depression wherever you can and get down mm -hmm. low so the tornado hopefully would go over you. But now they find out that the cattle have run off. And then they, like, we got the cattle, but there's, there's rustlers. There's rustlers. They're taking the cattle. Exactly. <laughs> 
So now her dad, the, the funky white girl's dad, Tim McGraw, and he's one. Then you got Sam Elliott, and then you got his captain, the black dude. He's, you know, that fought with him in the war, and I forget. So there's four of them. And they said, how many are there? They said, I think they said four or six. I can't remember. So funky white girl, I'm going with you, Dad. <laughs> going to a, they're, they're going to a goddamn, what do you call it? A goddamn fucking firefight. That's where they're going to, right? They're going to get the cattle back. There's going to be some well, bullets. can ride a horse. Lightning's coming with her. Light, but <laughs> she doesn't. I think she just learned how. Oh, she's killed a man, but I can't remember how she killed him. That's how forgetful this is. Probably somebody. piano wire after di that little ditty. <laughs> it might have been the singing that put him out. <laughs> I can't remember. But. Anyway, so she's going, and, and I think her answer was, well, if, there's th if bad things are going to happen, the safest place is with you, Dad. Oh, good line. Good oh, line. God. Give good me, line. Give me the barf bag. <laughs> Getting billions <laughs> once again. Bullshit. <laughs> That's total bullshit. What father would take his daughter into a firefight? Now, once again, it gets better. Now, the mom finds out about what his, her daughter has done. Is this Faith, Faith Hill? Hill? Faith, Faith Hill you look out. too good. Please do not go into the battle, Faith. I take, this, I take that back. The two cab. there was a couple other people that went with him. So there, there's Sam. There, there, curly bit, there was one more. Well, it was her. So there was th the three men and the funky white girl. <laughs> I should say, you know, the golden hair. So the two cowboys are sent back to tell Faith Hill... What's going on? Well, Faith Hill will have none of this. This is where it gets completely goofy. So they've got like a 12-year-old son, right? 10, 12-year-old son. They tell the two cowboys, she tells the two cowboys, guard him with your life. Guard him with your life. And now Faith Hill is going to get go off and get into the firefight. Going, God damn, Come this on, is Faith, you're supposed to be staying home moisturizing and singing, Taking girl. care of your son. <laughs> That's job one, mother. <laughs> what the hell, you're just going to pack it up because you're a tough sucker. Super smart. Didn't say you wasn't. <laughs> Jesus, somebody give me a break here. She rides off. Well, the firefight begins the uh, Sam, uh, well, the, the black dude, he gets shot, and and then and, and uh, what's his name? Uh, Tim McGraw. He gets shot, but this is the other. I'm not gonna love this part. These bullets just basically get in the skin where Sam Elliott can just pinch him out. He just <laughs> pinches him out. Don't need a doctor. He just goes over and pinches him out. Sam's bleeding, and he can't. They can't figure out where he get hit. He can't figure it out. And all of a sudden, he lifts his hat, and they just grazed him. Ooh, you know, he had the ooh. like the. You remember in the, all the old ones? I just grazed. Him. <laughs> <laughs> but so. I'm left to try to digest that bullshit. I mean, I just was going. And then at the end of it, Faith Hill comes upon a guy who's been hit. And so he's all punchy punchy. And he wants her. She says, give me your horse. Give me your horse. And I'm thinking, well, maybe he's just punchy. But I'm going, your horse, is, your horse, sir, is fine. Why do you need her horse? <laughs> Well, that was a big mistake he made by asking for Faith Hill's horse because he draws his gun out. Oh. And as soon as he does Faith Hill, what she do? She draws down on him with a shotgun. Now, here's the other bullshit part. You got to have your cheek on the stock to shoot. That's just common sense. Is that when you, this move? Yeah. In other words, I'm going to use the microphone. This is the gun stock. So you got your cheek right down. So you can see right down the barrel. Here's Faith Hill. Just, you know, got the cheek way face up. I'm going, Probably checking at 130 pounds. <laughs> Maybe PSI, it's a technique that I don't know anything about. <laughs> Maybe the snipers use it. I have no idea, but I'm unfamiliar with that technique. <laughs> but here's the other part. Faith Hill, she's got a double-barrel shotgun, which ain't loaded with sofa pillars. I read that on a sign once, and I could never figure out what it was because of spelling. But it's a sign you can buy. And, and, and I went, oh, sofa pillows. Sofa pillow, sofa pillow. So anyway, she blows this bastard out of the saddle, right? And I'm going once again. I'm thinking, you shot him with buckshot. <laughs> Very deadly. So deadly that you would have killed the horse. But no, no, the horse, he runs <laughs> off. No problem. Just shot him, only him. I can't stand bullshit like that, Todd. Huh? 
And you're right. It's Rigo's bullshit. And we, I will conclude with that. That's all I got. I got to tell you, I cannot not wait to watch 1883. You, you have actually <laughs> convinced me to go back to. And, and figure out the bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> so trust me, you're watching it already in Yellowstone. Yeah. You just don't know it. Yeah. You got to look a little harder. Yeah. I'm telling you what, it just comes to me. It's like, what do I smell? <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> so anyway, what do we got? Tommy? All right. So there's been a lot of uh, NFL quarterback activity oh, yeah. here in this past week. The official NFL start of the official NFL season uh, is next week, I believe, March 16th, uh, in which you can actually sign and make these transactions that have happened out there. So earlier in the week, you had one Mr. Aaron Rodgers. Uh, okay. Glad I, to see. By the way, just for the record, this completely went past me. I had no idea. It, free agency started, what, like the beginning of the week? Yeah. And, and, like and, and technically, they can't sign and do their deals until next week. But – but deal. you can come to terms. He, basically, yes. Okay. So, uh, Rodgers, at least he took away the drama and uh, did not string this out as the, the last debacle. It's, it's going to stay in Green Bay, finish out his career, looks like. Four years, basically $200 million, plus or minus a couple of mil here and there. So, uh, that was a that record. That he would record. miss if they didn't give it to him, probably. Yeah, I mean, that, that when you told me that was two days ago over the phone, I was stunned. I, I was for a couple reasons. One, that he stayed in Green Bay. You know that I, I'm figuring. You know, how much could he have got on the open market? Maybe they paid him more than he could have got. I don't know who was willing to pay him more than that. I know this. The local boys were getting ready to pony up, weren't they? Okay. I heard that's yes, a rumor. I heard. Yeah, yes and no. But they started out, and we know it's all. More bullshit, which is today's theme show is bullshit. When you start and say, yeah, we want Patrick Mahomes or Aaron Rodgers or Allen in Buffalo. It's or like, doesn't everybody? Houston. Doesn't everybody? Deshaun Watson, nobody knows how that's going to play out based on his still yeah, legal, legal situation problems. that's got to come and, and be resolved. So it's a pipe dream. And, every you know, that, again, just But, you know, somebody's going to end up. Yeah, but nobody's coming here under the clouds that exist, that, that, that uh, just is the dark storm. That's true. And you're not going to get Good an point. accomplished person, Russell Wilson, then the next day or later that afternoon was traded to Denver. And Has Denver got some upside to it? Well, yeah, because everybody's thinking that they were close, and they just were, you know, a, a couple of pieces, guy? a couple of pieces away. L.A. Uh, Ram type. Well, deal? you saw what happened with yeah. the Rams last yeah. year. Same type. And of deal. so, and and they really thought they were going to get Russell Wilson, which again, I just think it's a bunch this of team. nonsense. Yes, here locally, and that he had a no trade. Uh, clause in his contract, similar to one that John Reagan's had when Joe Gibbs. But came. he would be a free agent in this situation, mm -hmm. well, so it wouldn't really make any difference with a no trade. Uh, yeah, you're right. I did have a no trade, and Joe Gibbs. Is so trade. and and you know, it, I don't believe that was ever serious either. I think you you got you got speculation, and people want to throw it out there. So it's marketing, and you act like you're trying to. Nobody that's worth their salt is going to come here in this situation. You see the guys that come here and get paid, the Landon Collins and some of the free agents that come here. And what usually happens, and we've seen it 900 times with the high-priced free agents that come here, yeah. and they're, they get record money. We've paid more guys record money throughout the years. I believe Landon Collins was the highest-paid safety in the history of the game. And so uh, they let him go and save cap money. So now, and when I told you this yesterday, one Mr. Carson Wentz is now a Washington yeah. commander in which, and I'm being objective about this and following the national media, the local media, and for, for Wentz to come here, it was a shocker. And it's it's based yeah, well, it, and because told, I didn't even know about that either. They need they need under. marketing and 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 Wentz. Nobody knows. You have no idea. The guy, he has missed time in five out of his uh, six NFL seasons. Yeah, and, and the, the critical fact, one, the critical was second year, wasn't it? When they went to the Super Bowl and they let uh, what's his name win the Super Bowl? Nick Foles. Nick Foles. And good for Nick. And so. You just don't know what you have with the guy versus a sure thing. So you're kind of back into we don't know what we have. He's, he doesn't stay you healthy. Know. And the fact that Frank Reich, who was his guy, 
And Indianapolis gave up a bunch yeah, to get him. Did. One year. One year. And the other side of it is that Washington, once again, gave up too much. He's paying all of his salary, $28 million. He gets a $5 million roster bonus next week. It doesn't make, a, doesn't make sense on a lot of levels. And more people – I'm actually surprised at how more people are now – Negative. Negative. And, and to the point of like going, it's all marketing. And Dan's hands are all in this again is, is what the pervasive uh, uh, thought is for Mr. Wentz coming here this soon, this early in the process. All I can say is, is that, you know, in this situation, you, you do have perhaps, a, you know, history repeating itself. With a, monot- on a monot- with monotonous regularity, but I don't know. Wentz is one of those guys. You never know. You know, he, he could hit. the 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 deal with anybody changing teams, and it's pretty obvious, and it proves. I think it proves everything I've learned over the years about the NFL. It is a team sport because you're dependent on so many people, and not just the guys on the field. You're dependent on the people that are drawing up the plays and figuring out exactly how to employ everybody. I know what I know how that works. Painfully so, I know how that works to where you can be basically Basically, you can be a thoroughbred, and they can, and they'll turn you into a plow horse. I've been there and done that. Classic example is there's no other place, to, better place to look than Matthew Stafford. In Detroit, all those years, got nothing. Goes to the right place with the right people, got the right team around him, got the right coaches, and guess what? You win a Super Bowl, first year with a new team. It's pretty incredible when you think about it. And, and, and that's where you get that type of situation. And that's where you look at a guy like Carson Wentz. Could have, and that's where I think people like uh, uh, the kid out in uh, Russell, uh, that, uh, what's his name? Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. That, you know, that he's looking for a place where he'll have a chance to win. And in his opinion, didn't look necessarily good to come here because he's from Richmond, Virginia, I believe. Right. That's where he grew up. So this is kind of his stomping ground. So you have to know that he must have had. Well, his, uh, but plus, who knows? Maybe he likes the <clears throat> West now in Denver. He didn't want to get too far away from. See, I don't know. But the point I want to make is that. You have to wait and see. There's no way of knowing. I mean, yeah, they, they gave up a lot for for Carson Wentz. Wentz, is, Wentz played spectacularly his second year. He mm-hmm. was like, oh, my God, this guy's going to be. And all of a sudden, it went to shit on him. Yeah. I, I, don't, you know, I don't know how he pulls this back together. But I think that's what they see is that he has the potential. But then he's got all these other – that's why I say it's a wait-and-see deal. It isn't – I don't think he's a guy – that you know what he, basic uh, uh, Heineke, you know you knew that this is he's got a ceiling on him. He he'll, he'll fight his guts out. There's, There's a no reason question. he was 28. Yeah, had been playing in the arena league or whatever. Yeah. and you got what you got. Yeah, and he and he did fight his guts out. He did. He did some amazing. He deserved things. the contract that he got. In Absolutely, no, no questions about. No questions asked about that. Wentz does have, or once upon a time, there's the question. He had. That other gear. Does he still have it? Only time will tell. It is. That's a great point, John, because, you know, it, it. you see a lot of these quarterbacks that go through this where it flashes of brilliance and then, you know, it, it kind of reminds me a little Joe Flacco, right? And, yeah. and Flacco, then they get a big deal. They get the big money. Then they're not good for it. Then they flounder. They come back. Then they're a solid backup. And then they get a starters. I mean, this is a pivotal, pivotal year for him. As oh. a, as as a player, in which way he's going to go? But it's not in his it's not in his favor to us. Well, he's, he's, well that's he's, just he's, it. <laughs> well, it's not in his favor because a, if I'm not mistaken, they could use a few ponies up front. But maybe they'll do. That. I'm talking about Washington's team that they'll get in the draft. But they, you know, that was one of the one of the weak spots last year was they was basically trying to protect Heineke and whoever else right. was back there. Right. So that isn't going to do Wentz any good if he's got a leaky line. I mean. The guy in Cincinnati, Joe Burrow. I mean, this guy, like, he made magic. He he was pulling rabbits out of the hat yeah. every Sunday when he played, particularly during the playoffs, at least, because that's the time I got to see him play. I'm not sure Wentz is going to be able to do that, but you never know. It, it, and I got to say that I think that uh, that Turner, the, the offensive coordinator, you know, he's he's got you know his dad was that guy. I mean, I always you know, I'm sure he he doesn't think much of me because I called him out as being a head coach. He's not a head coach. Just some people aren't, some people aren't. Right. Norv wasn't. I mean, there's no way. He, and he had plenty of opportunities, but he never could get over the hump. 
But I'll tell you what, that guy knew how to call plays. He knew how to put an offense together. Genius offensive coordinator. Plenty of guys that are great number twos, but they're not good for the head job. There's nothing wrong with that. No. you got to know, like anything else, you got to know your limitations. Dirty Harry. I mean, I always go back to Dirty Harry. You'll find more out about life by watching Dirty Harry than you will anything else. Just listen to Clint Eastwood. He'll tell you how it is. Well, great transition. And do you feel lucky today? (laughs) Actually, I tell you who's not feeling lucky is one Calvin Ridley. Atlanta Falcon oh. wide receiver, and a man's got to know his limitations. And do you feel lucky, Punk? And the answer is no. No. One Mr. Ridley. He did feel lucky. That's well, his he problem. felt lucky, but once again, <laughs> be careful wrong. out there gambling, boys and girls. He guessed wrong. And he guessed wrong. And uh, this is unconstitutional, by the way. <laughs> What's well, happening? You him? can, you he, can. He should be. He should go right now and get in front of a judge and tell tell the NFL to shove it. But he's not. He's he already did nothing in enough, wrong. He's already in enough. It, it, it's in his collective bargaining agreement. Thou shalt not I don't not give gamble. a shit. <laughs> you can't see. You, I, I mean, to be that morally corrupt to say, oh, you guys can gamble on all these There's games. No Go ahead, but you help. yourself. It's legal to gamble. We're he didn't commit. A, we're not making a moral argument here. We're talking about the law. You know, the Sir, law, the law is a ho- bunch of horseshit. So to recap, for those that don't know, he was caught gambling in November. He admitted it. He he did admit it. They had the goods on him. A measly fifteen hundred dollars. I think it was three different parlays. He lost. He lost them all. And like they're saying that he did not have uh, you know insider knowledge or whatever else because he was away from the team. Do you think they would tell you? <laughs> well, trust me on that. If he's he I mean, had insider knowledge that the league ain't breathing a word of that because oh, no, that, that just that's starting to smell a little bit. This is where they get into trouble in my eyes. I'm talking about the league. You know, they obviously they want to make money, but somehow they think. Well, I mean, honestly, tell me. You're, you're you're condoning gambling now. Pete Rozelle is like is a, like a, he's a he's a slab of ribs over the fire. <laughs> he's rolling in his grave with this stuff. You remember how he was so uptight about any whiff of gambling? The integrity of the game. Come on, I remember Paul Horning, the Golden Boy, and Alex Karras. Yeah. And your boy Joe Namath just hanging out at Bachelors Three because of the. The, owner, the, you know, part owner of Bachelor right. Three, where some, you know, some of the Nefarious wise guys characters out. might be. Uh... Well, what I, what, but what, what I'm saying is, I don't see how you can tell your players not to do something that the, you know, that's legal. That same thing of marijuana, I think, is still not legal for the players, isn't it? In other words, if you honestly get, don't know, I think that if you get tested for marijuana and you, you know, that's one of the drugs that they test for, which that's. It's legal nowadays. You know, I just I don't get that. I guess they're thinking if you bet on it that you might throw the game. There's no way of knowing when officials make calls. You'll never know that that official ain't getting a little something under the table to make that call. You don't. It, it, it's just the way it is. Okay, but and it's very opaque when it comes to the officials. We talked about them last week. Yeah. In the uh, in the combine for the officials. <laughs> Uh, that we should have <laughs> that 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 is like nobody knows any that is just all walled up you don't well know you better create the illusion or you got nothing well that's the whole point i'm selling you that you do that's what you're doing well i guess that's, all that's your really point had to do and that's your point and you know what it is a good one i'm gonna i'm gonna reverse my direction here they are the league is creating the illusion that it doesn't exist when in reality Somewhere along the line, one of these officials has needed a little extra cash and has done the wrong thing. Listen, it's happened in the NBA. Yeah, exactly. It's happened, it, you know. But if you don't protect that at all costs in the essence of your game, you're done. I mean, and that's that's a massive illusion, right? Calvin Ridley's going to lose $11 million in salary next year. Spend it for all next year. Is Let, that, it's official now. Yeah. And, and, and but John, Ooh. if you don't. And I said this all along, and I think it's really going to be pervasive in college sports in certain areas where the gamblers can get to guys, and and and, they, and they're smart enough to know and pick and choose their spots to to certain players. It could be more meaningless, this and that, because it's just all about raking the big cash in. All Calvin really had to do is get a family or friend, place the same damn bets. 
But to do it, you're, 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 I mean, how bright can you be? That's not super smart. No, that's couldn't not play. even a good community guy. He couldn't play. Well, he could be a good community guy. He, couldn't good. Play for he could be a good community guy, <laughs> but he's not super smart. He couldn't play for Coach Joe. Well, he starts tweeting out afterwards, I do not have a gambling problem. I only bet three games. This and that. He's trying to, like, stop, stop. Whoever's telling you to push this it's out. It's like there. the guy that gets the DUI says, I, I'm not, I don't drink. I don't, I don't you know, well, like, I, don't, I don't have a drinking problem. For anybody out there, talking about the morality of the league and all of that but again you still have rules based on the integrity of your game and that's your contract and you know that is the third true. rail that's true right i, mean, I, I agree with i you. mean that's the third rail i agree with you i guess you get into the like you know you take it to the next level beyond that which is what i would consider reality which and that is where it's and it is it gets back to what we talk about a lot and you just said it creating the illusion Without that illusion, what do you have? And, and, now you got and, WWE. And I, huh? You got, you got. And that's exactly where I was going with it. Because, it, but in that, once again, no one knows. You, I mean, do, does anybody? I mean, I don't know for sure. I mean, I've got a very strong opinion that that's all worked out ahead of time, right? The, Wrestling. The, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's pretty. That's okay. So <laughs> you're I'm, not stepping out I'm on getting, a major limb here, John. I, oh. <laughs> You're not get, we're not getting in trouble sense. for this you one. Go, oh. boys, boys and girls. <laughs> Wrestling. That snapped. Might, I heard that limb snap. Might have a predetermined outcome. Yeah. So <laughs> so what I'm saying is that they they create enough of an illusion, but then let me ask you this. If that's the case, why are those little old ladies in the front row getting up there going, you know, and like they're getting all worked up about somebody beating up on somebody when they're normally not beating up on anybody because it's pretty much all the same writers of 1883 have scripted that. <laughs> it is. I don't even know why I ask. All right. That's it, folks. Rigo out. I need a beer. Bad. No bullshit. <laughs> yeah.